during this uh, time before the <laughs> wretched dark ages the uh, all kings and dragon priest kings were of elven fairy bloodline. Uh, we can assume that uh, one of the last famous examples of this would be the uh, Arthurian king from the 5th, 6th centuries. Probably one of the last great pagan Celtic kings prior to the control of the empire leaders during the Dark Ages that thrust civilization into ignorance were not the great mystical seers and sages of the age prior, which became known as pagan or heathen as if it was something evil, and bad, negative. During the Dark Ages, the church was not the beacon of light that it once tried to exist as in Gnostic illumination and mainly ruled in an age of darkness. All of the magic prior was marked as evil. Except, of course, uh, for that which was used by Moses and Jesus and those who could do miracles by God's hand. Indeed, the Dark Ages begins when Rome starts deciding the coronation of kings and replaces the elven fairy. Dispatching them much in the manner depicted as the uh, Jedi are ambushed and annihilated in uh, Star Wars Episode 3. Only a select number of them survived and were forced underground. At the beginning of the Elven Holocaust, political changes occur. Further books are removed from the Bible, and it becomes a crime to even be Elven Fairy. In 751 AD, the last of the elven Merovingians, the keepers and guardians of the temple, said to have been descendants from Solomon's ancient temple, are disbanded and excommunicated from Rome and the blessing of Holy Mother Church. So the Carolingians end up replacing the Merovingians. You see, up until the 6th and 7th centuries, the Gnostic wizards and Druids actually worked closely with the Catholic Church, and they saw Jesus as a figure of uh, each of their own traditions. And this disturbed the later heirs of the church who saw the Elven Fairy as a threat to the seat of Rome and the Vatican's new power to select kings and rulers contrary to the wishes of the Druids and the Elven lineage. The sons of man feared that the sons of God would rebel and thus the new church was formed independent of them with only a shred of the original Gnostic vision remaining. The focus of the church now is to take control of Europe and eradicate paganism the Anti-Witchcraft and Magic Act is what finally drove the last of the Elven Fairy underground under penalty of death. To be of the Elven Fairy ancestry was now to be, by heritage, a witch. And the true witchcraft was indeed passed down through family traditions and genetics. This only changed as a result of New Age publications being brought to the mainstream over the last few decades. Those that could teach in a single book what others had spent lifetimes gathering and dying for. But in 751 AD, the church state was empowered to commission death sentences to country witches of the medieval ages. Very simply, magic was outlawed, and with it, a series of traditions and lore and important sciences. Without this knowledge, the civilization in Europe was thrust into a dark era indeed, dark with ignorance, suppression, and murder. Before digressing, I wish to impress even more the severity of what it meant when the Romans destroyed the Elvish Druids because it runs much deeper than flesh. Sure, the blade and weight of an army can destroy a physical man, and perverse warriors might rape the priestesses. These are crimes of the flesh. Small numbers could destroy at Stonehenge what took thousands of years and maybe millions of man hours to perfect. Sacred groves cut down, Ogham libraries burned to the ground, and a race spread out and completely destroyed. What is more abominating than crimes of the flesh, which are grave indeed, are crimes of the spirit. Crimes that reduce a culture to a few broken artifacts and inscriptions. 